The feature I'm going to code in this video is automatically adjusting our camera's height depending on how bumpy the terrain is. So I've got my finished script working. So let's just show you guys. I don't know if you can see this because my terrain's pretty flat, but as you can see there, the camera's kind of adjusting um, its height relative to the terrain bumpiness or how high the hill, the hill, these hills are on the terrain. And I've also got a, that's a good one, so there's quite a big one there. So it's just adjusting. And when it gets to a certain value, I think my limit's 85, it will snap to that limit. So it won't go any further than this. So we can also apply limits to the uh, movement as well. Okay, so I'm going to code this in this video. Let's just replace the World Camera 2 script with the World Camera. So let's just drag on the World Camera. This is the one we've been working on. Okay, I'm just going to apply a couple more class variables. We only need three variables for this one. So the first one is going to be a public float camera height. Okay, so this value is not going to change in the, um, as the camera's moving up and down. Uh, this is only for scrolling, only for scrolling or zooming you could say, it's both the same thing so this camera height is not going to change in this video, it's going to be the default camera height okay so we're going to apply the difference in the bumpiness to this value to the camera height okay so the only reason we'd want to change this is if we're scrolling or deliberately moving the camera up and down with our mouse wheel or something like that so okay so the next one's going to be a public float as well camera y camera y and this we are going to change this will change uh, relative to the terrain okay so this value is going to update the cameras uh, the cameras y position not this one in this video okay guys okay so I don't want these two things to be displayed in the inspector so I'm going to put hide in inspector so now we won't see them when we're kind of changing our game in this view so that's cool. The last thing I wanted to do is define the maximum camera height. I'm going to make this public float. I'm going to call it max camera height. And I'm going to give it a value of 85 units. Okay, that's good. So where are we going to assign the camera height a value? Well, I'm going to do it as soon as the script loads or starts up. So camera height is going to be the camera's transform position. Dot y. Okay, so we're just getting the camera's y position when we first load the script. In this case, is when the game first starts. So we're going to add two methods in this video. The first one will be called inside this bit. So once we know our desired translation or position is not going to be over the boundaries, we can actually define the position here. So I'm going to say vector three desired position equals so the transform position plus desired translation. Okay because we know that's not going to be over the boundaries and then we're going to bring it into another method okay we're going to call this method update camera y desired position so this method is going to work out the y value the camera needs to be in relation to the terrain bumpiness okay and after we've worked all of this out we're going to actually apply it okay and we're going to apply it outside of this because we're going to use a smooth damp function and a smooth damp applies itself over a particular number of frames so we want it to continue happening even if we don't input anything from the mouse or keyboard so that's why I'm going to put it here so this one's going to be apply camera y okay so I'm just going to comment this out for now and the first one we're going to do is this one update camera y okay we're going to do this here so public void not going to return anything camera y let's bring in a vector 3 called desired position so to work out the camera's new y value we're going to to create a ray cast and project it from the camera directly downwards on the terrain and that's going to work out the difference between our default camera height okay and the point at which it hits the terrain so to do that I'm going to define a ray cast hit we're going to call it hit okay and also a dead zone because if the difference between the heights are say 0 0.001 there's not much point in adjusting the height because the user will not be able to notice anything I'm going to assign the dead zone a value of 0 0.1 okay so any difference between 0 0.1 and minus 0 0.1 is not going to be applied so let's do this the raycast if physics raycast okay so we're going to do it from the desired position that's why I bring in the 
the uh, the vector three desired position. Make it go directly downwards, so vector three down. So we're going to use the hit um, the hit values like the hit point, and uh, the the length of this is going to be math f infinity. Just so we know, it's always going to hit the terrain. Okay. So then we can assign a new height. So float new height equals camera height. So the default camera height plus the hit point y. So the y position of where the raycast hits the terrain. Okay, guys. So I'm just going to do something really quick. I'm going to debug log out the hit point y. Okay. Let's close some space and uh, we need to close this off. I think. So I'm going to debug log the hit Y so we know the position of it and just show you how it changes as we hit the terrain. So 0 0.3, so let's go to a bumpy bit. So as you can see it's getting bigger and bigger as we hit the bump because the Y value is increasing. Okay, so that's how that works. So I'm just going to apply a new value here. I'm going to say float height difference Okay, equals the new height. Okay minus the camera y value because the camera y value is going to be updated on every frame um, so we're going to minus its current y value from the new height value so now we know the difference in the height we can actually uh, test if it's in the dead zone or not and then apply it to our camera y variable which is at the top camera y okay so the camera y is going to hold the, the camera's y position on every single frame it's going to update it so we can say if the height difference is greater than minus dead zone, so if it's greater than minus 0 0.1, okay, and we can say the height difference again is less than dead zone. So in this case it will be in the dead zone. So if this is the case we can just return. We don't want anything to happen here. Okay, and we can do another test. We can say if the new height is greater than max camera height then we can return again. We don't want to update the camera Y position. Okay, so simple as that. And after we checked all this, we can say, yep, camera Y equals the new height. Okay, so now we've actually created our camera Y. We can now apply it to a smooth damp function and update the camera. But before I do that, I'm just going to debug something. Debug draw ray. So I'm just going to draw the ray we created. This transform position. Vector 3 down times the length a thousand because math inf infinity will not work in this case let's apply a color okay so let's just see the ray cast in the actual scene so we know it's working gonna drag this out drag it out we can't see the ray cast at the moment because we are not pressing anything down because remember the function is called after we actually input something and as you can see I'm inputting things now with the keyboard and the ray cast is showing. Okay guys? Okay, let's move on. Let's just return after we finish that. So the second function, apply the camera Y, because we've got the new value, now we can apply it to the camera using our smooth damp. Okay, so again public void apply camera Y. We're not going to bring in anything. So let's just do a check. Say if camera Y is the same as the camera's current position dot y okay or camera y equals z zero because on on the first frame this this script loads the camera y is going to be zero because we haven't assigned it a value so we're just testing for errors here and there's no point updating to the same position we are uh, we're already at so let's let's set up the smooth damp function so to apply a smooth damp we firstly need the the duration of it so the smooth time so I'm going to put 0 0.2 if you want a more gradual appearance guys increase this value also we need to bring in a velocity let's just bring in 0 so the, the, th the function automatically updates this velocity as it's a, as the smooth damp is taking place we could apply one to begin with but there's no point in this case so let's just create this new position based on the smooth damp new position y equals mathf smooth damp so we're going to apply the smooth from our current position so transform position y and we're going to move towards the camera y value okay so 
we're going to reference the velocity, so y velocity, because that's going to update. And we also want to apply the smooth time, so the duration of the uh, of the smooth damp. Okay, simple as that. We've got our new value, and now we're going to apply it to the camera. So we can do one more test. So if the new position y is less than max camera height, we can actually do this. So we can just update the camera's transform. So we can say transform position equals new vector 3. So we don't want to change the x position, so we can just say transform position x. For the y one, we can say new position y. And the same for the z value, we don't want to update it. Transform position z. OK, guys. And then we can just return this. Return. So it's as simple as that. Let's just comment these out. Apply the camera Y to a smooth damp and update camera Y position. OK, and for the update camera, calculate the new camera, new height for the camera based on the terrain height. OK guys, simple as that. We just made two methods to apply the new camera position. Let's see if it works in the game. So I'm moving towards a bumpy thing and because the bump is higher than the terrain itself it moves upwards. OK, going to move downwards and it moves up and down even if we're moving the camera. So sometimes it might not be so noticeable. So if, you've, if you're following a unit and he's walking towards a really bumpy terrain, it'll be really nice effect to keep following the unit. So it might come in handy for you guys. So as you can see, it's moving right up to 85 and then stops. So the smooth dam's being applied all the time, so it's really smooth. OK, guys? So just to, just to make sure we understand everything, I'm going to de just debug log out the height difference. So the difference in height that's being applied on every frame. So I'm just going to play the game and just make sure everything works just fine. So this is, as you can see, when we when we move down, when we're moving down on the bumpiness of the terrain, it's a negative value. When we're moving up, it's a positive value. Okay, guys, and we just apply the difference to our camera height. Okay, everything's working just fine. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Feel free to apply this to your own camera controllers. Really awesome. And it's not the same as scrolling with your scroll wheel. Okay, this is just kind of editing the height based on what, what you can see in the game. Okay, so thanks for watching the video, guys. See you in the next video.